A warm welcome to your County Lines and Gangs Awareness Session, brought to you by Solutions Equinox for Police Learning. My name is Phil Church, and I shall be your narrator and guide for this session. This presentation is brought to you by Solutions Equinox Training Solutions and our SETS channel for online learning available on YouTube. Like and subscribe for more videos. So the agenda. There'll be some introductions from ourself and the session for County Lions and Gangs Awareness. And there'll be an opportunity for some session feedback either email or using the comments section featured on YouTube. Our company background. Well, we were founded in 2018 after my co-director and I left the police earlier in 2018, after 22 years and 15 years police service. And these are just some of the companies and partners that Jason and I have had the privilege of working with since then. And these are the police services that we worked for and whilst in the BTP we were recruit trainers, training and teaching new recruit officers and transferees for five years. If you'd like to know more about us please feel free to visit our company website at solutiusequinox.com. So for this session have a think about what are your needs and expectations. Would you like to learn more? If so, please contact us at info at solutionsequinox.com. So the aim of this session is an awareness of county lines and gangs, the grooming of exploitation of young people and vulnerable adults. And the learning outcomes will be understanding of what constitutes a gang understanding of child criminal exploitation by gangs, an understanding of how gang exploitation affects young people and vulnerable adults, to have an understanding of who is vulnerable to gang exploitation, and to have an understanding of county lines and gangs activity, and to know the signs of grooming and exploitation by gangs. And finally, understanding your responsibilities. A key action in the government's serious violence strategy is to raise awareness of county lines across key sectors of health, housing, education, social care and youth offending in order that staff working in these frontline settings are able to identify and refer county lines affected individuals and help prevent exploitation. The government state that they want to make it clear that their approach is not solely focused on law enforcement, very important as that is, but depends on partnerships across a number of sectors such as education, health, social services, housing, youth services, and victim services. An early intervention and prevention. And the government state that we must prevent people from committing serious violence and being drawn into exploitation by building resilience, supporting positive alternatives and providing timely interventions at the teachable moment. And the teachable moment is that moment when a unique high interest situation arises that lends itself to a discussion of a particular topic. And a teachable moment is often best demonstrated when a significant emotional or traumatic event and the emphasis being on the moment versus the lesson. An example would be after a high speed motor vehicle accident when the use of a seatbelt has obviously saved a life or, conversely, when the lack of a seatbelt has caused loss of life. And people look back at that moment and the reporting of that as a teachable moment. Well, what is a gang? The term gang is routinely applied to any or all groups of young people 
involved in antisocial behaviour. Groups of young people are not necessarily gangs and mislabeling them has negative consequences. Think of Durkheim, Tannenbaum, Becker for the labelling the theory. Society uses these stigmatic roles to them to control and limit deviant behaviour. If you proceed in this behaviour, you'll become a member of that group of people and it's the labelling that applies to it. Indiscriminate use of the label could become a self-fulfilling prophecy and that might be something you might want to look up. Police forces and other agencies have had different perceptions of what constitutes a gang. Academics struggle to agree on a uni universal definition of what constitutes a gang. And we need to differentiate between delinquent youths and gangs. The Metropolitan Police used Hallsworths and Young's 2004 definition to define a gang where they stated that it was a relatively durable, predominantly street-based group of young people who see themselves and are seen by others as a discernible group for whom crime and violence is integral to the group's identity. Strathclyde Police, now Police Scotland, used the 2004 Home Office definition of what constitutes a gang and that stated that a group of three or more people who associate together or act as an organised body for criminal or illegal purposes. So as you can see this demonstrates the difficulty in agreeing a universal definition of what constitutes a gang. The Centre for Social Justice have utilised the following definition of a gang. They state it's a relatively durable, predominantly street-based group of young people who see themselves, and most importantly for them, are seen by others as a discernible group who engage in a range of criminal activity and violence and they identify with or lay claim over territory. And they have some form of identifying structural feature. And they are in conflict with other similar gangs. Now gangs have hierarchical structures. They have sergeants, generals, foot soldiers. And this is something that they use to promote within. Now if you look at the myth of gangs versus the reality you can see some of the issues here surrounding the money, weapons, groups of youth together, open access to sex and fast cars, weapons and money. Drill videos are used in many places to promote or encourage violence. But when you look at it versus the reality, injuries, amputees, the suffocation of freedom of speech and people can't speak out, victims find themselves unable to speak out freely for fear of being attacked or worse. The National Crime Agency and the police will be kicking in the doors to make arrests, seizing weapons, drugs. There's injuries, some of them extremely serious, and drug abuse. And in some cases homelessness and other violent injuries that take place. Now, if you look at the myth versus reality, gang crime is not confined to the stereotypical geographical groups. If you look at the media highlighting of gang crime, there are some significant stereotypical views highlighted by them. 
and that needs to be addressed. Identified risk factors for serious violence. Risk factors are exacerbated for many areas from the individual, the family, the school, the community and peer groups. If you take an individual, there's been evidence of childhood abuse and neglect, low self-control resulting in impulsivity, aggression, low intelligence, substance use, a positive attitude towards offending where they find that there's no fear of them actually being caught. They're involved in antisocial behaviour, previously committed offences, they have low self-esteem, gang membership and even a head injury that can affect behaviours. With the family, there is a family socio-economic status. They have antisocial parents and that includes substance abuse, poor supervision and parental criminality. In the school, they already have low school performance or their performance is starting to decline. There's evidence of them bullying others, truancy and school exclusion. In the community, there's urban areas, urban areas of high crime and local deprivation. And in their peer groups, they are hanging around with or have associations with delinquent peers. 63% of young people responding to a survey stated the main reason for carrying a knife or gun was for protection. Not all groups of youths engaged in antisocial behaviour or criminality are in a gang and labelling youths, as previously stated, as a gang can be harmful and become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So the Centre for Social Justice a definition of what constitutes a gang is a helpful guide to ascertaining if someone you are interacting with is a gang member being exploited or groomed by one. Current reporting constrains the ability to assess the role County Lines has played in the increase in social uh, serious violence. Recorded since 2014, anticipated greater compliance with reporting will improve our understanding of links between the two issues. However, the data that they do have for the NCA does evidence the continued threat of violence and serious injury, including the loss of life in relation to county lines offending. Within supply areas, both vulnerable drug users and runners are at the greatest risk of violence. And there is also evidence of serious violence as a result of tensions between competing groups engaged in county lines offending. However, there are also reports of tolerance between both competing county lines groups and local offending groups, even within small markets. This may be indicative of sufficient demand across supply markets to sustain rival operations, meaning market saturation would be a key warning indicator prior to an increase in violence. Serious physical violence is evidence across branded lines. The use of and access to weapons such as bladed weapons, firearms, imitation firearms, stun guns, crossbows, crossbars, crowbars, accesses, axes, hammers, screwdrivers, knuckle dusters, CS sprays and acid continue to be reported as linked to county lines. There are a currently 118 branded lines reported as having links to firearms, primarily originating in large exporting forces such as Merseyside Police, the Metropolitan Police and West Midlands Police. The specific use of blade weapons in relation to county lines offending remains an intelligence gap, although seizures of weapons during the weekend of intensified activity in October 2018 evidenced that individual offenders and groups continue to have access to a wide range of weapons, and that's from the NCA in 2018. Child criminal exploitation is common by gangs involved in county lines and occurs where an individual or group takes advantage of an imbalance of power 
to coerce, control, manipulate or deceive a child or young person under the age of 18. The victim may have been criminally exploited even if the activity appears consensual. And this is important because the victim may have received a new mobile phone, a new pair of trainers, new clothing. In order to receive that, they would have had to have carried out a task. And that task is usually criminally involved, such as the transporting of drugs. Now, the victim agrees to carry out this task because they believe that they will receive a reward. So the activity appears consensual. They are still being criminally exploited. Child criminal exploitation does not always involve physical contact. It can occur through the use of technology. And with TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger and other methods of transmitting messages and other forms of abuse and online such as sexting or videos involving harassment, the child criminal exploitation can still occur even through the use of that technology. And criminal exploitation of children is broader than just county lines gangs and includes, for instance, children forced to work on cannabis farms or to commit theft or robbery. I dealt with an incident several years ago at some railway arches at a lockup. The MOT centre next door to this particular lockup kept smelling cannabis in large quantities wafting coming from the place next door. After a search warrant was obtained and entry gained, we found a huge cannabis factory with hydroponics. Two 14-year-old Vietnamese boys were looking after it, having been locked in from the outside. They had no way to exit, exit the building. They had a bucket for a toilet and bottles of water and packets of sandwiches just to keep them fed. And they were ex expected to keep the hydroponic systems working. The conditions were awful. The electricity system could have killed them in an instance. It was that bad. Where did these children come from? How did they get into the country? Who were they? Who were their families? Who were exploiting these kids? They were unknown to the system. They were unknown to the Home Office. They were there being exploited and forced to work on this cannabis farm. Something for you to think about. How does exploitation by gangs affect young people and vulnerable adults? Criminal exploitation of children under the age of 18. It affects vulnerable adults over the age of 18. Geographically, it's a widespread form of harm. It knows no borders, no boundaries and can travel across the country extremely quickly. Exploitation is a typical feature of county lines activity. And this exploitation and injuries is harm, which is relatively little known about or recognised by those best placed to spot its potential victims. So teachers, doctors, social services, health officials, police services are missing, in some cases, obvious injuries right in front of them because of certain questions are either being avoided or not asked. It is still exploitation even if the activities appear consensual and may involve force or enticement to gain compliance and is often accompanied by violence or threats. And it's perpetrated by individuals or groups of all genders, young people and or adults. And it's typified by a form of power imbalance 
in favour of those exploiting. Age may be the obvious imbalance. The young may take advantage of the elderly and frail. The older people may take advantage of those younger than them, but it can also include gender, cognitive ability, physical strength, their status within the society and their access to economic resources. So this can affect those who are poor and those who are well off. 88% of police forces reported gang activity. 81% of police forces reported importation of drugs into their areas. 30% of police forces reported gangs being active in their area who are exporting drugs to other counties. London is the largest area for exporting county lines activity followed by Merseyside. And 77% of police forces reported cuckooing in their areas linked to county lines gangs. Exploitations often accompanied by some form of exchange. So for example, carrying drugs in return for a reward. Monetary, status, could be a mobile phone, new trainers. That being a tangible reward, cash, drugs, clothing. An intangible reward, such as status within the group, protection from the gang, or perceived friendship or affection from the gang. They're actually being exploited. So it's a perceived friendship or affection. Like all gangs, there is an unequal dynamic of power. And as previously stated, the reward given to that person does not make those being exploited less of a victim. Because they receive the reward, they are still a victim. The victim may be involved due to threats against their family members rather than tangible or intangible rewards. Criminal exploitation is the most common exploitation type within county lines offending. Both males and female minors are recruited to act as runners within the county lines criminal business model. The runners carry the most risk with the model as a result of transporting large amounts of cash, drugs and weapons. Both male and female victims are exposed to techniques such as plugging, where drugs are concealed internally for transportation. Children undertake other roles within the county lines model, including cutting and bagging drugs, collecting debts and cuckooing premises. More generally, victims are criminally exploited in roles outside of drug supply, with intelligence indicating vulnerable victims forced to conduct petty crimes such as shoplifting, as well as other forms of theft. Offenders make use of this exploitation to further increase their criminal profits. Cocooed addresses have been linked to many county lines, with victims of all ages encountered by law enforcement in such properties. Children recruited in the areas in which offenders are based are forced to move in and live in cocooed properties in supply areas, often without payment, health care or access to food. And that information has come from the National Crime Agency. In this case study, a male's hand was severed and both his legs were broken. The victim was male with intelligence supporting that the incident was a drug taxing. The victim is believed to be part of a county lines network with the offenders being a local drug line. It is suggested to be a punishment attack by the persons the victim was running drugs for, for having used the drugs or spent the proceeds himself. 
So think of some of the incidents that you have dealt with in the past or may be presented to you in the future. One particular incident with an arrival at a hospital accident and emergency saw a young male who claimed he'd fallen off his bicycle at two o'clock in the morning and the only injury that was sustained were busted kneecaps. Nothing else. No scrapes to his arms, his elbows, his hands, his face where he'd fallen off his bike. Just his kneecaps. What was he doing out at 2am? How was he really injured? An arrival at an A&E saw a young male claiming that he'd fallen on a large mirror and the glass had shattered. Again, the injury that was sustained himself was a large puncture wound to the abdomen. No cuts to his arms, his legs, anywhere else, scrapes, a large puncture wound to the abdomen. So think of the professional curiosity with yourself for police officers, ambulance staff, hospital and social services. The professional curiosity and the questions that can be asked in these circumstances as to how these injuries were obtained. These people are victims as well as being an offender themselves. Who is vulnerable to gang exploitation? Well, children as young as 12 years old are being exploited or moved by gangs to courier drugs out of their local area. 15 to 16 years is the most common age range because parents like to let the children have that more element of freedom and allow them to move further away without the need to constantly be in, in touch. Males and females are exploited and white British children are being targeted. Gangs are perceiving that they are more likely to evade police detection but any ethnicity or nationality may be exploited. They are playing on unconscious bias and the stereotypical approach of some people within the police service. Social media is used to make initial contact with children and young people. So be careful of games such as Roblox, Fortnite, Call of Duty and other systems that use an instant messenger that where the message will disappear over time. Class A drug users are targeted so that their gangs can take over homes, which is known as cuckooing, and is open to exploitation for people who are vulnerable. That includes the elderly and other drug users. Their homes are taken over, their homes are moved into, and their homes are exploited. An elderly gentleman of someone who I was told about was not allowed to go to his upstairs of his home. And this was discovered because a home visitor was checking on the health of this elderly gentleman when these group of lads walked into the room, into the home. And she asked the right question, who are they? To which he replied, that boy there is my grandson, but I do not know who the others are. I'm not allowed to go upstairs. They live up there. She put the right reports in and it turned out that they'd taken over upstairs of his home and were using it to make, sell and distribute drugs. There's been an increase in the use of short-term lets and guest houses to store drugs and cash rather than cuckoo properties. Offenders use victims to make bookings for such properties in order to distance themselves from the property of, and from the criminality because they're realising people are cooing up to cuckooing. Victims are sometimes subjected to sexual exploitation through forced engagement in sexual activity within the criminal networks and this is largely but not exclusively restricted to female victims. A minority of female victims may also be sexually exploited for the financial gain of offenders, although this is likely to be an opportunistic rather than an organised basis. 
County Lions offenders have been identified in the direct sexual abuse of vulnerable young people. Adults involved in County Lions activity have been identified offering their children to controlling offenders for sexual activity. Offenders have been identified both cuckooing the properties of sex workers and using cuckooed properties to host parties at which vulnerable female minors are engaged and encouraged to consume drugs. Vulnerable females provided with drugs and subsequently held in debt bondage, taxing, by offenders may be sexually exploited within the offending network as a form of payment. County lines are widespread with gangs to known to operate from London, Liverpool, Manchester and so forth and are known to target vulnerable children and adults. And factors that heighten a person's vulnerability. The prior neglect, physical and or previous sexual abuse. A lack of a stable or a safe home, either now or in the past. Domestic violence, parental substance misuse, mental health issues, criminality, parental conflict are all elements that can increase or heighten a person's vulnerability factor. A person's social isolation. They've been isolated by a community, labelled, in some cases, many in many cases wrongly labelled. They have economic vulnerability. They themselves may be homeless or live in an accommodation that's insecure. They have connections with people associated with gangs. They have a physical or learning disability. They may have mental health or substance misuse issues. They may have been in care or they may have been in and out of care homes. They may have been excluded from mainstream education and therefore the learners are now in pupil referral units along with other troubled exploitation. Young persons and children who are recruited by gangs to move drugs between cities often go missing for extended periods of time from home or and school. And many of these individuals have a poor quality of life and have suffered throughout their childhood in many occasions childhood adverse childhood experiences. Now, these are factors that heighten a person's vulnerability. It's important to state, to state here that these people will not instantly become involved in gangs. But these are the factors that heighten a person's vulnerability. I know people who have been in and out of care homes, have mental health issues, have been homeless and have avoided and have not gone and got involved in gangs. It's really important to note that. The vulnerability factors that can heighten the risk of somebody becoming involved in the gang. If you take the personal factors, the difference that they feel they are, their age, whether they are young or old, their ethnicity, their mental health, their sexual orientation, their religion, their gender and any disability that they may have. These are personal factors of increased vulnerability. If you then take the fact that these situations they find themselves in, they may be engaging in risky behaviour, they may indulge in alcohol or they may be smoking the occasional cannabis joint, running out and doing a bit of shoplifting. In some cases, the abuser is present when the persons are being questioned by those around them. Poverty. They may be involved with a low income and are living hand to mouth. 
And in some cases, the fact that the child is bringing home money because of the gang, the parent is ignoring this purely because the fact they're keeping a roof over their heads. They may feel they've got a complete lack of support from the system, from services, from friends, from family, from loved ones. They've been a victim or they may have been exploited by grooming, whether it be for sexual purposes, terrorism or for gangs. Their immigration status is a situational factor of risk. Gangs will take advantage of this. If they find out that the person is an illegal immigrant, they'll threaten to report them to the authorities. If you take the example of the two Vietnamese boys, how did they get here? Where are their families? There is a total lack of power because the other people have the power over them. They themselves may have poor language skills. I'm not sure if you're aware, but if you come to the United Kingdom and you are foreign with poor language skills and you are lost, you are treated as vulnerable by the authorities until you are found because you are open for exploitation. They themselves may be isolated from other communities, from families, from other loved ones. There may be elements of coercive control from those surrounding them, might even be a parent themselves. There may be family instability, including parental conflict. And adverse community circumstances surrounding them. If you add these factors together, the personal factors plus their situational factors, it equals a harm or a risk of harm for that individual to become open for exploitation. Which of these vulnerabilities do you recognise in the people that you interact with? Because harmed people harm people. That boy did not just choose to pick up a knife. That boy there in that picture has potentially been exploited. Something in his background has caused him to pick that knife up and become involved in criminality. Historical and contemporary unconscious bias. I make no apology for the picture of the person that's just appeared being Jimmy Savile. Historically, unconscious bias on an individual and collective level have led to profound failures in the criminal justice and care systems in relation to problematic children and vulnerable adults. Those who have been subconsciously labelled by police officers, social services and other governmental agencies tend to be deemed problematic and potentially untrustworthy when allegations are made. Unconscious bias was a factor that was highlighted in a number of high-profile abuse cases involving celebrities, such as Jimmy Savile. If you think back to the situation involving the sex offenders in Rotherham, the girls had gone into police stations in many occasions to make rape allegations. They were turned away because they were deemed to be promiscuous and problematic. Uh, problematic. Unconscious bias is often a factor in relation to how those on the extremes of society are treated and viewed. These factors are duly exploited by gangs, seeking to exploit the vulnerable who are often on the extremes of society. Prostitutes would walk into a police station and say they'd been raped. But as far as they were told, a prostitute could not be raped. They were on the extreme of society, so they were ignored. They were a victim. It's about giving the victims a voice. So the question you need to ask is, 
is this person a criminal or are they a vulnerable victim? It touches on the Jimmy Savile sex offences scandal and how problematic victims were not believed by the police. It links back to unconscious bias and the difficulties attached to viewing offenders as possible victims. Could the people you interact with be susceptible to exploitation? Do you have concerns they are being exploited? What are your concerns based on? An adult at risk is any person who is aged 18 years or over and at risk of abuse or neglect because of their needs for care and or support. Where someone is over 18 but still receiving children's services and a safeguarding issue is raised, the matter should be dealt with as a matter of course by the adult safeguarding team. And that's from the NHS. And the police service state that a person is vulnerable if, as a result of their situation or circumstances, they are unable to take care of or protect themselves or others from harm or exploitation. That's extremely important because that vulnerability as a result of a situation or circumstance could come at any time moment in our lives. It could come from a disease, an injury or circumstances occurred in your life, maybe the loss of a loved one that's left you vulnerable and open to exploitation. Whereas before you would potentially be a person they would avoid, but now you're open for exploitation and for harm. Some gang involvement signs to look for. Involvement in gangs often leave signs. A person may often leave signs, whether they are an associate or a member of a gang. And they could be a sudden change in their lifestyle. These indicators include persistently going missing from home, school or being found out of their own areas. An unexpected acquisition of clothing, money, mobile phones. Excessive texting, phone calls or having multiple devices. Relationships with controlling older persons or groups. Unexplained injuries or explanations that don't quite add up. There may be parental concerns. They may start carrying weapons for protection. Whereas before they had quite good attainment results, now there's a significant decline. They have associations with gangs or they may have peer isolation. They may find themselves involved in self-harm or changes to their emotional well-being and they could be now using language that is out of character, which could be sexual in nature, aggressive. Highlighted risk factors of gang involvement. Physical injury can risk of serious violence and death. It leaves emotional and psychological trauma. Sexual violence, sexual assault, rape, indecent images that are being taken and shared as either part of an initiation or revenge or even punishment for a debt. As I mentioned earlier, internally inserting drugs known as plugging. The debt bondage where the young persons and families being in debt to the exploiters, which is used to control the young person. If a person makes um, noises about potentially leaving the gang, 
or they could be relatively new to the group, the gang, they are, not, they are often robbed of the drugs that are given to them to sell or to transport by their own gang members. And then this debt now has to be paid back with interest, which keeps them stuck within the gang. They can't leave because they now owe the group back. There's neglect and their basic needs are not being met. They could be living in unclean, dangerous or unhygienic environments. Tiredness and sleep deprivation because the child is expected to carry out criminal activities over long periods and through the night. You may notice that they've got poor attendance and or attainment at school or college or university. And the siblings of those involved in gangs have a higher risk of becoming involved themselves. And I'm aware of a gang member who left a gang, who managed to leave the gang. But unfortunately, his brother started to become involved in the gang. Now, instead of the brother warning him off and telling him about the dangers of the gang's exploitation, he didn't. He turned his back on them and said, if you become involved in the gang, I want nothing to do with you. The gang chose that to exploit him even further. Because they said to the boy, your brother no longer wants you. Your brother feels that you are not part of his family anymore. We will be part of your family. We will take you in. We will look after you. And your brother is a traitor because he left us. We will never leave you. Thus sucking the boy into the gang further and isolating him from his own family further. What is County Lines and how are gangs involved? Well, the UK government defines County Lines as a term used to describe gangs and organised criminal networks involved in exporting illegal drugs into one or more importing areas within the UK using dedicated mobile phone lines or other form of deal line. Rail network hubs such as Birmingham New Street, Clapham Junction, Manchester Piccadilly, St Pancras, Waterloo are key points of access to and exit from the rail network. However, it remains likely that other less obvious hubs are frequently used in County Lines activity. The continued provision to British Transport Police of specific intelligence by local forces would lead to improved understanding of the use of the rail network by both offenders and victims within County Lines activities. Between May and August 2018, 35% of suspects in County Lines activities encountered on the rail network had links to possession of weapons within the previous six months and 3% were linked to possession of firearms and this is evidence of the ongoing risk to both British Transport Police and members of the public of use of the rail network by county lines offenders. They are likely to exploit children and vulnerable adults to move and store drugs and money and they will often use coercion, intimidation, violence, including sexual violence, and weapons. County Lines activity and the associated violence, drug dealing, and exploitation has a devastating impact on young people, vulnerable adults, and local communities. A national road network also remains key to the transportation of offenders, victims of exploitation, drugs, cash and weapons. Both hire and privately owned vehicles, including those by vulnerable adults exploited in county lines activity, are used in transportation between and within supply areas. An emerging trend has been identified around the use of cloned number plates on private vehicles presenting challenges around the use of automatic number plate recognition. Offenders may also make use of minors who are not yet qualified to drive, 
encouraging them to operate vehicles illegally to facilitate the movement and supply of drugs. And the extent of the use of taxis, minicabs and private hire vehicles remains an intelligence gap. An emerging trend around the use of app-based taxi companies to transport both offenders and potential victims of exploitation to supply areas has also been identified, as identified by the National Crime Agency. Contributory factors to County Lines Gangs criminality. It is a saturation in inner city marketplaces and it's led to gangs operating beyond their own towns, cities and counties. Less crowded places tend to be outside the big cities and inner city children and young people are recruited to help set up drug markets in provincial towns. It's a business model. It's actually a very clever, simple business model. If you bake biscuits and cakes in your local village and you have the monopoly within the village on the cakes and biscuits and everybody's buying them and you want to make more money, you might want to look at the next village to look within. If there's already somebody there who is selling cakes and biscuits within them, you have two options. You either undercut their prices or you move in and take them over. The same goes for drug dealing. Now, the County Lines label is a relatively recent one. It's been coined in order to label across county criminality. In reality, there's always been cross-border criminality in the UK. Communities which have been isolated in the past from County Lines criminality are now finding themselves at the forefront as gangs exploit new untapped markets for drugs and with access to transport becoming easier and easier it makes it simpler for them to spread whereas before the, the gang activity would happen within the criminal elements within inner cities it's now spread into the countryside if you are a Charles Dickens fan you only have to read Oliver Twist and Fagin and Bill Sykes to realize there is not only child exploitation a criminal gang, it's county lines, there's also a prostitution ring because his girlfriend, Bill Sykes, was a prostitute and he was her pimp. Professional curiosity. Do you have a moral responsibility to explore your hunch that something is not right? Raising concerns can pose a dilemma. How will the individual feel about raising concerns and how could this affect relationships? Is there an obligation to highlight concerns? Are there obligations for organisations to share information and data with you? What could happen if you don't highlight concerns? Are there force specific guidelines? Some of the headlines that have shown over the years have proved that where people have not had professional curiosity and have not asked the right questions, mistakes that have led to grooming scandals being repeated, Rotherham, Jimmy Savile, and other incidents and reported incidents over the years that have involved gangs and exploitation of the vulnerable. Three hundred and thirteen thousand know a gang member. Sixty thousand gang members or siblings of gang members have been reported. Twenty seven thousand gang members. Six thousand five hundred and sixty identified gang members. 34,000 know a gang member and have been a victim of violence. 74% of police forces reported exploitation of vulnerable persons. 12% of policing regions reported exploitation of adults with physical disabilities. 
61% of policing regions reported exploitation of drug users and 37% of policing regions reported exploitation of adults with mental health problems. 65% of policing regions reported exploitation of children. And 26 police, a percentage of policing regions, reported groups sexually abusing children. Now these statistics come from the NCAA from 2017, so these statistics could well have increased. So, can you afford not to raise your concerns? Some key legislation. The Children's Act 2004. After the Victoria Climbier case, the Children's Act 2004 became law and set out in statute the outcomes that are key to children and young people's well-being. Section 11 of the Children's Act 2004 in particular places a duty on specified public bodies and key individuals to carry out their functions having regard to the need to safeguard and promote the welfare of children. And that includes local authorities, including district councils, the police, the probation service, NHS commissioning bodies, and so forth. Safeguarding and promoting the welfare of children is defined as protecting children from maltreatment preventing impairment of children's health or development, ensuring that children are growing up in circumstances consistent with the provision of safe and effective care, undertaking that role so as to enable those children to have optimum life chances and to enter adulthood successfully. Many organisations subject to the Section 11 duty are required to take part in local safeguarding children's boards and these include the district councils in local government areas that have them. Chief Police Officer for a police area of which any part falls within the area of the local authority. The local probation board for an area of which any part falls within the low area of the LA a youth offending team for an area of which any part falls within the area of the local authority, and NHS commissioning bodies for any area of which any part falls within the area of the local authority. And NHS commissioning bodies, all or most of whose hospitals or establishments and facilities are situated in the local authority area. The CARE Act 2014 Safeguarding Adults sets out a clear legal framework for how local authorities and other parts of the system should protect adults at risk or abuse or neglect. Relevant to people in health, housing, the police as well as in social care, local authorities have safeguarding duties and these include a responsibility to establishing safeguarding adults boards including the local authority, NHS and police which will develop, share and implement a joint safeguarding strategy. Any relevant person or organisation must provide information to safeguarding adult boards as requested. Wellbeing is at the heart and care and support system under the CARE Act 2014 and the prevention of abuse and neglect is one of the elements identified as going to make up a person's well-being. An adult with care and support needs may be an older person, a person with a physical disability, a learning difficulty or a sensory impairment, someone with mental health needs including dementia or a personality disorder, a person with a long-term health condition, someone who misuses substances or alcohol to the extent that it affects their ability to manage day-to-day -day living. 
the involvement of the adult with care and support needs, multi-agency partnership is also at the heart of the safeguarding principles set out in the CARE Act 2014. Although the police will lead on all criminal investigations along with health services and individual health professionals including GPs, all have a duty to cooperate and have a vital role to play in preventing, reporting and responding to allegations of abuse or neglect. Those involved with gangs may themselves have had substantive criminal offences committed against them. Thank you for listening. We are always interested to hear your feedback, so why not leave us a message on our SETS channel? I hope you found this presentation on County Lines and Gangs Awareness useful.